Um, my name is Natalie Vilter and today I'm going to walk you through on how to do a lovely little fish watercolor scene. So first I'm going to explain what materials you'll need. Um, there's quite a few but a lot of them you can find in your own house, maybe just aside from one or two. So you will need some watercolor paper. I would suggest three pieces to start out with. Um, you will need a ruler, a pencil and an eraser, some scissors, um, some watercolors, some glue, a paintbrush, um, a little glass of water, um, and then some crayons, and then some optional things that you can use is you can grab some salt from your um, kitchen along with some saran wrap and maybe just a little squirt bottle if you so choose. You can um, you can also use like a, a hand sanitizer spray kind of just like this and just and like if, when you're done with it you can just fill it with water which is what I do at home. Okay so to start out with we are going to watercolor our papers. So we're going to watercolor two sheets and I already completed one of them just to complete time and so it looks a little abstract right now, but that doesn't really re really matter because we're going to just cut it up. And I'll show you all the fun tricks that you can do to have some of these fun textures I have on here. So um, I would recommend doing two different colors per each uh, watercolor paper. I would suggest a blue one because we're going to make a lovely water scene. So you'll have to do one sheet blue and then one of your choice, which is what we're going to use to make some fish. So. For me, I think I'm going to do just some oranges lots of, and warm colors like yellows, oranges, and reds because I want to make some lovely goldfish to be swimming in my little scene. All right, so you are going to take one sheet of watercolor paper, some water, water, <laughs> um, and then your watercolors and a paintbrush. And then maybe also your spritzy thing. So I'm just going to wake up my watercolors. Here, I'll put this down so you can see. I'm just going to squirt a little bit into each one. You can also just use your paintbrush and just dip in your water and then just kind of fling some water into each page, onto each thing. All right, so I'm just, let's see. And then to start out with, I'm going to use some crayons and you can use whatever colors you want. And I'm just going to do a little bit of scribbling on part of the page. Now I'm going to show you all the t techniques on this large sheet of paper. You do not have to use all of them if you don't want to. I'm just going to do them in, in odd sections just to get them all on. So maybe I'm just going to do some little, I don't know what you would call these little waves. They maybe, they look kind of like rooftop tiles in a way. I'm just gonna do a few of them and maybe I'll mix it up and use a, another color as well. Maybe I'll add some greens. Maybe I'll do some little squigglies. You really don't have to think much about this process. Just kinda do some fun scribbles just to ease some tension and stress if you're feeling any. And maybe I'll add some purples. And so as I do this, I should explain that um, crayons are made out of wax. So once you put watercolors over top of them, the, the watercolor will just kind of avoid the wax so the crayon will still stay on, which is a really neat process. Um, I should mention that white, uh, white crayon is also really fun to do. So maybe I'll do some polka dots on this section. And the polka dots are really cool because, I mean, it'll just show up as white after you put the watercolors over top. Um, it'll look a lot more interesting when I, I'm, it's done. So I'll just add a few more. And you can really just have fun on this page. You can do lots of scribbles and stuff. All right. So then I'll show you this technique and then I'll go into the next one. So I'm just gonna take some watercolor. I'll start with some orange and just kind of paint over top of the crayon. And as you can see, the, the crayon is starting to show. So maybe add a little bit more water. 
your whole thing doesn't have to be like the exact same value of color. You can have some lighter oranges maybe in the corners, maybe some darkers there, whatever you would like. And then maybe I'll add some reds in here. And it's kind of fun because the water will kind of bleed into the orange and it'll be really cool. Just the way it kind of, you never know what's gonna, what you're gonna get. Maybe some more yellow over here. I'll do some large blotches of orange. And you don't have to, maybe I'll add some greens in too, just for kicks and giggles. All right, now I'm gonna show you the next te technique that you can use is um, you can use the salt. So I'm just gonna, in this area, I'm just gonna quick put some watercolor. Maybe I'll add a little bit of blue in here too. And I'll just sprinkle a little bit of salt. And what the salt will do is kind of like absorb the watercolors. So you'll be left with this really cloudy texture, which is really neat. Maybe I'll go over in these areas too. All right, and then another fun technique that you can use for this process is you can just um, add some water on here. And you can just apply some watercolor right on top and it'll kind of just kind of float around. You'll kind of see these fun splotches and they'll start to spread. Which is really neat. Um, maybe some more red. Okay, and then uh, you can also use your saran wrap in some areas. Uh, let me finish this up really quick too. My mistake. Uh, that's a yellow. Maybe some more orange. Oh, and I didn't add any purple. So you can use all the colors that you would like. Another really fun technique to do is, let's see, what color should I do for this? Um, let's do blue. You can load up a bunch of water and watercolor onto your paintbrush and you can just splat, which is really fun as well. So you can get these fun dots. Okay, now the last technique that you can do is you can take some saran wrap, if I can get the little thing out. My goodness. Um, I should mention while I try to get, oh, there we go. Never mind. I'll save that little tidbit for the later. And I'm just gonna take my scissors and All right, so you can take your saran wrap and you can just lay it on top and you'll you'll kind of see that once this dries, you'll get some lovely little crinkles. So kind of, you'll get some lighter spots and darker spots because of the saran wrap. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so while this is drying, I will show you the next step. So you'll want to do, like I said, you want to do two sheets. Um, one blue and then one whatever color of your choice. So then once you're done with your blue one and it's all dry, um, you're going to take it and flip it upside down and you are going to take your ruler and you're going to take about maybe two, um, measure two inches off on a vertical side and a horizontal side and, we're, and make a line. Here, I'll, I'll show you. So you'll just, let's see, 
you'll just take your pencil and just mark two, in, two inches across the entire sheet. And then you'll just take your ruler and you'll just draw a line to connect those. And then you'll do it on the same side over here. Two inches, two inches, and then connect them with a, a longer line. And then you are going to take your scissors. I'll move this over here again. And you're going to cut along that line. So I should mention as I'm doing this, um, that this would be a really fun, um, when the final project would be a really great um, idea to get framed and then to hang in your bathroom or in a kid's room or even in a living room. Well, I think it would look really cool in, the, in a bathroom. But anyway, so then you'll have your new size of watercolor paper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it this side, um, the white side again. And here, let me move this if I can. It's still drying. There we go. Oops. Uh, let me get some paint. I should mention you also need the paper towel as well, just to wipe up any messes that you make, like I did. Okay. So then you'll lay your blue sheet face down and you're going to draw some squiggles. So it's a, just some fun waves. And then right next to your one squiggle, you're gonna make another squiggle pretty close to it. And the, this is gonna be where we're going to cut. And you can do as many little squiggles as you want. As you can see, I drew about, I drew six squiggles, um, two really close to each other, so they look like little, they look like giant worms. So then we're going to take our scissors, and then we're gonna cut along these squiggles. And if you don't want to, you don't have to use a, um, a pencil, you can just, um, freehand this if you would like. So just take your scissors and see where the scissors takes you. All right, so then we have one little sheet done. And then on to the next. So we have one little worm and we're just gonna set it off to the side. We won't be using that piece. We will not be using the, the little, the giant worms. Or maybe it's an Alaskan bull worm or it's a snake. And so off to the side, I'm just gonna lay them down so that you'll have this space between them. Here's another little worm. All right, and we have another piece. It went like this. You may need to, it's a little bit of a puzzle to put it back together. And I'll explain more what I mean by that in a little bit. After I'm done cutting off this little worm. And I should mention that you can save these little worms for um, one of our next projects if you would like. That way we can you can save your resources. And honestly, they, they look really cool with all the fun techniques that we use. Okay, so then we have this done. 
So then we're going to take one other piece of watercolor paper that's blank. And we're going to move this off to the side. I'm going to lay this down. And then we are going to arrange our pieces on here. So we'll have some really neat negative space going on with this, this white little streak. So it'll kind of look like, in a way, um, it'll look like, kind of like water ripples. Like if you've ever been to a swimming pool and you have those, those weird lines on a really sunny day in the swimming pool. And we're just going to kind of eyeball it to make sure that we have a nice white border. This way you can, it'll look really professional if you want to get it framed or if we just want to hang it on your fridge. All right, I think we're good. So then you're going to take your glue and we're going to glue these down. Here we go. And watercolor paper is a little hefty, so you may need to press it down for a little bit if need be. Oops. And you may leak a little bit on the side, but that's okay. If it really bothers you, can, if you have white paint at home, you can always um, paint over your little blemishes that you make with the glue. Ooh, I'm making a lot of little blemishes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my crayons over top so they can stay while I, it dries. So then I'll take the another piece and glue that down as well. And you can leave as big or little of a gap as you would like. However, I highly recommend leaving maybe at least a quarter of an inch gap just so you can really see those water ripples. And I guess the paper towel also comes in handy for wiping off the glue on your fingers. However, I always like to peel it off as well. Okay, now on to the next piece. And this is a really fun project for all ages, just because no matter how you do on it, it I think it always turns out really cute. And I don't know if any of you are in 4-H, but I think it'd be a lovely 4-H project to do. Or even a, a gift to a family member for the holidays or for their birthday. And I think while I was gluing, I got a little off center, so you can just slide it over. All right, so we have this part is done. And as you can see, it looks really neat. Now I'll flip it here, so. The sides are curling a little bit, so I may have to add some more glue. All right. And then as I wait for this to dry, I'm going to work on my orange piece that isn't quite dry yet. So I'll just cut up a little section to show you what the next step is. So here's a little section, whoops. I'm just gonna kind of air dry it a little bit. Great, so what we're going to do with this orange piece or whatever color you decide to make is you are going to um, make a fish. So I can turn it off onto the side and I'm just going to draw a fish. Now for me, you can draw a fish however you would like. I always like to start with a circle. And then I do a little, I don't know what you would call this, like a little ringlet and then some, some fun lips. 
which looks like a sideways heart. Then on the opposite side, I'll do another little crescent, but maybe it's a little bit bigger. Then I'll just draw some fins. And my fins kind of look like a Pac-Man. I guess that's how you would describe it. <laughs> and then maybe I'll draw a fin up here. Or like a, I don't know what this would be called. If it's called anything. It looks like an Elvis hairdo. Right. And I'd suggest letting this dry, but honestly, I had it on the table and kind of made it fun texture on the, the table. So you can do that too. All right, and then we're going to cut along our edge. And I'd suggest drawing your fish on the white sheet of paper so that way you don't get pencil marks on your lovely design that you made. And your fish does not have to look exact or real. You can draw however you would like it to be. And if you don't want to draw a fish, you could do a mermaid or an octopus or a squid or some made up sea animal, whatever you would like. Almost done with these lovely little fish lips. And here we go. So we have a little fish design and you can give your fish eyes if you would like. All right, so, oh, it's curling again. You may have to put like a book over top or something just to keep it um, from not curling. So then you'll take your fish and you can just lay it over top. I'm going to quick make a little I don't know what you would call this. There we go. There, I'll, maybe I'll do a fish there. And maybe I'll wanna do another one. Maybe I'll do a bit of a longer fish. So maybe for this one, I'll do like a I don't know what this, I'd like an eyeball, like a giant eyeball. I guess you can't see that. Here, let me draw that in pen and crayon. There we go. So then I'll do another little crescent, some fish lips, and maybe a long fin, maybe a tiny little Pac-Man for the back tail. And I, you have all these weird snibbles from cutting the, the fish and from doing your little water riplets to make your little worms. But you can use those for further projects that we'll use if you would like. I think that, that would save you some time if you wanted to. All right, so we're almost done. All right, here we have another fish. See, and then we'll just lay that on here as well and move my schnibbles out of the way. All right, so then what we'll do is we'll just take some glue and we'll glue our little fishes down. And make sure you get all the little parts of your fish so you get the lips and the tail and the Pac-Man 
effect heal. And so then you'll just lay it down like so. And I'll do the other fish. And like I said before, once your watercolor dries with all the techniques that you use, um, all the techniques really show up and it looks really neat. All right. So then afterwards when you're done, you can sign your name in the corner if you would like to um, autograph it, I suppose, to give to your grandmother or your neighbor or your mother, whatever you would like. But anyway, I think this is a just a really fun project to do and you can hang it in your bathroom in our kids room or whatever you would like. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching and waiting for the my watercolors to dry.